Mark Clerical about one number 15. The 27 year old Gerda from Nason shackles the cut there, handcuffs. Hello and welcome along to the Life Changing Moments podcast series on The 42. I'm Fintan O'Toole and we're going to chat shortly to our latest guest in the series, the former Kildare footballer Eamon Callaghan. Now we've teamed up with UPMC, the official healthcare partner of the GPA and GAA to produce this Life Changing Moments podcast series. With over 40 hospitals, 700 doctors and 90,000 employees globally, UPMC is providing life changing medicine to communities across Ireland. To find out more, go to www.upmc.ie. So as I mentioned, Eamon Callaghan, who made his debut for Kildare in the 2003 Leinster Championship, went on to captain the county senior side and was still involved up until the end of the 2018 Championship, joins us now. Eamon, great to have you with us for this chat. Thanks, Fintan. Good to be here. So, Eamon, you had a long spell of service in the Kildare Senior Football Colours, but what was the moment that you've chosen uh, when thinking about one that had a big impact on your career? Uh, yeah, so there was a couple of moments really, but I, I suppose the one moment that's, that, that changed my um, my career in football was um, it wasn't a, a match or it wasn't a moment in a game uh, such it was more of um, it was a, something happened outside of football really it was a meeting I had with uh, Kieran McGinney, um back in 2010 uh, which was really kind of changed the way I, I, I played the way I, I played football the way I approached football everything um, so um that that was it really. You know, I, I would have I would have played a lot of football obviously before that, you know, between two thousand two and to two thousand ten. But when I had that chat with him, that kinda of seemed to change everything. Uh, the way I the way I played the game, everything my whole approach changed after that meeting and uh that's kind of one thing that stands out for me that's kind of that changed my career it's interesting that this kind of comes almost maybe halfway through your Kildare senior career so it wasn't like you lacked experience at this stage you, you'd you'd been involved for a good couple of seasons yeah I was I was I was um I would have been 27 I suppose yeah I would have played for for maybe uh, seven or eight years and I think that was that was the whole point of the chat he wanted to have with me you know because he 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 realized that I, I was playing I, I was I, I played most of the time um, between 2003 and 2010. I was I was probably playing most games uh, and starting all like most games. And the the thing was that his 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 thing to me at that time was I wasn't doing enough. You know, I could there was a lot more in me. He felt there was a, I could have uh, been a better player, been a you know a better better player for the team, and I, in like individually, personally, I, I could have done it, got a lot more out of myself, and. Um, I suppose looking back on it, he was probably, he, he was right. You know, like I, I was probably maybe floating for the first few years. I was playing intercounty football, maybe just playing all the games and that. But uh, I really kind of um, he really kind of changed my attitude, my mentality about about the uh, approach to training and, and to games. So the background here is that Kieran had been in charge for a couple of seasons. Uh, in two thousand and eight, you got to an All Ireland quarter final against Cork. In two thousand nine, you got to a quarter final as well against Tyrone and contested the Leinster final of that year. So. Starting to make strides. How did you find, kind of feel uh, you were going heading into the third year with him in charge in 2010? Yeah, we 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 were very confident at that stage, you know, because we had kind of come from like a very dark place where we were getting beaten, you know, early in Leinster and early in qualifiers. We hadn't uh, reached an All Ireland quarter final, and God knows how long it was uh, a good few years anyway. But um, when he came in his first year, we we went on a run the qualifiers, got to a quarter final. That kind of gave us all a bit of. Um, a bit of a lift, you know, and a bit of a kind of a, a bit of confidence to say, like, geez, we're not too far off here. Um, that followed up the next year with a Leinster final against Dublin. Uh, we lost by three points, and again got to a quarter final. We were, you know, narrowly beaten again. And yeah, things were building, and we were, we we were kind of going in the right direction. And we kind of we all had that belief then in ourselves, in Kieran, and Kieran obviously had that. It was his third year uh, with us, so we kind of had we had high expectations really in 2010 to kind of push on again. Didn't get off to the best start though when you had those uh, high expectations on the first day of the championship. Talk us through that game at the the start of June. It was the 5th of June in Navin and you played loud. Yeah, um, it was just a disaster. It was disastrous really, you know, because we'd, we'd uh, you know, played all year in gearing towards the championship and having done so well the previous two years. Um, and I don't think we didn't take, I don't think we took loud for granted really. Um, we didn't, uh, I can't remember, I, I don't remember feeling kind of overconfident or anything in that game. But jeez, uh, like they just got they just got on top of us, and uh, we were just off it the whole game. We were chasing them the whole game, and they, oh, like they, they bet us by they bet us easily. Like you know, it, it was uh, it was 
it was a big kind of uh, shock to us, really, and I suppose around the, around the county as well. It was a big shock to supporters and that that we'd been beaten so heavily by Loud in the first round, like you know, after the kind of work we'd done in the pre- previous two years. In general, when people are thinking back to 2010 and Loud and Leinster football, it's it's obviously the final that most people think of. But I mean, this this was a massive win for them. I think they hadn't beaten Kildare in 15 years. Um, and the scoreline stands out. I mean, they scored 122, you scored 116. So it's, it's a very high scoring game from the word go. Yeah, it was an open game of football. And um, I think that's a, the, the thing about Loud, Loud that year. They were actually going very well. You know, they were flying really. Um, they had a couple of years there around that time where, where they were, you know, they were kind of competing and uh, they had some very good forwards. They were well set up defensively. They worked hard. You know, they had a few very good players. And um, that was it. We just got caught and they, they, they were like far better than on the day. And um, like that was that was a big wake up call for us because we had to um, kind of regroup after that. Then you know for for the qualifiers again, which was a uh, something that we hadn't we weren't planning for. You know. So the meeting you had with Kieran takes place in the wake of this game. Can you tell us about it, the the context of it? So I was kind of summoned to his house. <laughs> I I just got a, a call or a message to to go up to him in Dublin um, to meet him up in his apartment and. Uh, I yeah, it was fine. Like I mean, he would have met the players a lot, you know, individually one on ones, and um, I kind of didn't think it was going to be anything different um, until I got there, and you know, I kind of was marched upstairs and he had a room, you know, and it was like a, it was like a GAA shrine. It was just a, an office basically, but he had all the all the whole wall kind of covered in pictures of you know, like all Ireland, like you know, Sam McGuire, and he had a lot of motiv- motivation stuff in the wall. But I was kind of going, geez, this is this is something else like to have in your house, like, you know, but, uh, yeah, so I was just up for a chat really. And he went through me bit by bit kind of, uh, you know, he, he didn't hold back, um, in what he thought about a few things that I was doing, a few things that I wasn't doing. And, um, I just kind of sat there and kind of sat there and took it really, you know, for, the, for whatever long we were there. And he, we kind of wrote down a lot of things on a, on a big flip chart of things that I had to do. And, um, things that he felt about my the way I trained the way I the way I played that there was a lot more I could have he could have got it that I should have been I should have been doing a lot more basically and uh, he just gave me the four or five pages of, of uh, the, the flip chart and I went home with it and uh, yeah there was kind of some some uh, he, like the thing with Kieran is he's very honest you know and that was the big thing like you know I, I knew I knew that when I was leaving that I, right, I had to do something I had to act on this you know but um there was a couple of points on it that kind of cut me to the bone, which I wasn't uh, too happy with. But I just had to concentrate and, and, and kind of just do as he was t- telling me because, you know, I, be- I, I believed him as well. You know, I believed he was he was trying to do the right thing for me as well. So um, that kind of changed after that then, my, my whole pro- approach then. When you say he kind of regularly had meetings with you, it probably doesn't sound like it was a very different approach. So, and like you talk about his honesty, um and i mean this is the third year so you probably had a good idea of the kind of and an insight in the way that he was going to work and so did that maybe not take you too much by surprise uh, you know like when you they'd meet you maybe for a coffee or something you know and uh, or he'd you know i'd ring you or he'd meet you before train or something but it wasn't it was different the fact that i was going up to his house and it was he had this thing set up like you know for he obviously was meeting a couple of lads maybe but um yeah so that was the kind of difference you know it was kind of more serious more you know, he was definitely, he wasn't messing around this time, like, you know, and whereas he'd be telling you things before, I knew this one, he was, you know, he wasn't holding back, like, and uh, he, he had a few things to say to me, and I just, you know, I just kind of had to get on with it, really, and, um, you know, ever since that then, it was, um, I had to change my attitude, I had to change the way I, I, saw, I looked at things, I looked at things very differently after that meeting, you know, uh, and, you know, I think it worked, because we, we had a, we had a, like, I think a six-week six week break between that loud game and the first qualifier game so we had plenty of time to work on things and um we got a lot of work done in that six weeks which kind of set us up then for that qualifier run in 2010 aside from the fact that it's your manager is telling you this the fact that it's a guy who's lifted the sam mcguire eight years before and i mean he pretty much went straight from playing with Armagh uh, into intercounty management i think i don't think there was a break of a, a season or anything like that did that give it kind of maybe extra credibility uh when he was kind of laying it on the line for you like that Oh yeah, like and and just the, even the, the the previous two years since he came, like just the whole professionalism that he brought and the whole um, the change in attitude that he kind of brought a lot of changes that time as well, you know, from where we were. So we were, you know, we were very, we were. I was very impressed with him, and like you know, we would have done anything for Kieran, you know. So when he was telling us that, like we, there was a 
we had a good relationship, like you know, and we kind of he pushed us hard in training, and we, you know, we we worked hard in training as well. But it was there was a kind of a respect thing there as well. So when he was telling me that, I just knew I had to do it. Like or you know, it was kind of what's the point of playing football if you're not going to do? You know what I mean? You're, 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 he's telling us like with all the experience he's had and brought from winning it from playing with our mafia years. So we we kind of um we kind of knew that he wasn't. We we just believed him. You know, we believed him in everything he said and. Um, that's what I took from it. The fact that you had a bit of experience yourself did that make it a bit easier to take? You know, if, if you know if you're a younger player on a panel and you're only in the door a, a couple of seasons, maybe it can be difficult to hear that kind of honest talk. But you know, you you had a good idea of maybe at that stage what the intercounty game entailed. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I think maybe you know, a younger player might have might have uh, fought back maybe or tried to you know fight his corner or try and get into an argument or something. And maybe that's I, I don't know. Um, I'd be a fairly quiet lad though anyway, like I wasn't too <laughs> vocal at that time anyway. Um, you know, so I, I, I kind of, I, I don't know if there was other lads he'd met with and there was maybe shouting matches, I don't know. But yeah, like, I, like at that stage as well, I knew I knew from where we came from and I knew to where we were at that stage. We'd, we'd come a long way in those couple of years. So I kind of, I knew that he was doing something right and that he was bringing us in the right direction and he was very passionate about Kildare. So it was... Um, yeah, it was just you, you had to do as you, you, you could. You could only do as as he was as he was saying, really. So you didn't go away and try and find out what other lads had had meetings. Your your approach after that was to just kind of uh, knuckle down and concentrate yourself. Yeah, and, and that was it. I remember. I think that meeting was on a Monday or something. It was, and we trained on the Tuesday. And there was a couple of things he said to me in the meeting about training that I wasn't um, pushing myself in training. That I I would have felt I would have been fairly fit. I looked after myself fairly well. And uh, his problem with that was that. I was still, I, I should have been more. I should have been winning the runs. I should have been winning the, like I, I should have been leaving players and, you know, I, I, I should have been dominating training matches or training sessions and stuff. Uh, where I, as I wasn't, I was probably just coasting through it at 80% maybe. And he felt I, there was one, of the, one of the things that really stuck out from that made me called me lazy, which I never would have considered myself as um, a lazy player. Um, but he mentioned it to me a couple of times in that meeting. And uh, there was one thing that stuck out as well was the, in training, um, and this is something that I've always kind of taken uh, from it, was that uh, to to get to the point in training where you you feel like you want to quit, and that's when training starts. You know, like that's when you really train your body to push through that breaking point or through that barrier, that pain barrier, um, in tr- in training. And then the matches, when it comes to a match, then it'll just be easy. You know, but it's constantly having to push your push the barrier, like in in, in terms of physically, like just running yourself into the ground. Um, outworking your opponent whoever you're marking and then if you do that continually over you know over a period of time when it comes to a championship match or a league match or whatever you'll have you know you'll have an edge on them and that's what I started doing and, and looking back on other players would have done that the whole time until they're um, like the likes of Johnny Doyle Emma Bolton uh, these kind of players and he wanted me to get up to that level I suppose and um, so I just started doing that the following the following night in training I started doing that as he told and um, things just seemed to click then I think you know after, after that first defeat we, we kind of went on a bit of a run and built a bit of confidence and went on and you know got to the semi-final that year that's a really good insight into I suppose how your preparation kind of changed and maybe your input into training but I'm wondering then on a match day in terms of your forward play was there anything specific you were kind of working on then because it seems that that summer the team really takes off but you're really central to that you're getting some big scores in games and you're on a serious winning run together yeah um so what, yeah, he, like what he would he would have wanted me to do more. Like so, if I was chipping away at maybe getting a score in a game, playing wing forward, if I was getting a score in a game, he, me my role was to win break ball, um, to be a link between the defenders and the, the attackers, and to, to chip, and to get on the scoreboard as well and kick maybe two or three points a game. Um, so I really focused on that, and um, like I suppose I did I did I did do that, and he was he, but his point was that if I worked really hard and really got into a place where I was going for 70 minutes rather than just floating around for maybe 70 minutes, you know, if I was going hard for 70 minutes, that teams or people like lads who were marking me would struggle with that. Um, so that was it. I, I just ended up getting on more ball. Um, I, I, like, you know, I worked hard on winning break ball. I worked hard on getting on a lot more ball, you know, through my runs and, you know, making extra runs, making harder runs to, to get on the end of scores maybe or whatever it was. But uh, I just kind of pushed myself for those couple of weeks. And, um, you know, it, it, it's mad how, how it just kind of changed and it kind of clicked. And uh, I ended up getting on 
do you know, I, I ended up just kind of getting on the end of end of scores rather than just kind of floating around in games. It probably wasn't a position you wanted to be in, be gone from the province so early and have to go down the qualifier road. But it was one you seemed to adapt to pretty well throughout your career. I mean, we're talking about the 2010 season here when you lost to Loud. Even in your last season playing for Kildare, you lost early to Carlo, but you managed to turn things around. What, what was it about the team or, or the county that... Was it a bit of resilience that you were able to kind of get the show back on the road so well? Yeah, I, I thought we kind of. Um, like it's, it's not a it's not a good thing to have in your team, but it, I think we kind of um, we reacted to you know criticism from outside, from if supporters were criticizing us, or you know people around the country kind of uh, not respecting us and stuff. I think we we kind of it kind of made us bond together a bit more, and we kind of understood that we had to fight, come out and fight for ourselves a bit more, and. Uh, unfortunately it, 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 it took those losses maybe to, for us to do that and that shouldn't happen you know like you should be raring to go for every single championship game no matter who you're playing or where you're playing um, but that was the thing that we really if, when we were beaten you know by even Carla that time or Loud and happened over a couple of years we, we, we were knocked out early um, we really kind of built, got together stronger over those couple of weeks um, before we played again you know and that's I suppose it, it, it's, it's a good trait to have but then again you'd kind of wonder why did we not have that kind of togetherness and that bond and that kind of fight uh, from this first round, you know. But yeah, it seemed to happen a couple of years ago there. This qualifier run as well starts with a very different type of challenge for you as a team. It's it's a very emotional day for Kildare football when uh, you played Antrim in Newbridge on the same day as the funeral of Dermot Early Senior. What what was that like for the, the team and, and, and the squad in the county? Yeah, that was... Um, that was just such a like it was, it was a strange game of football really it wasn't it wasn't about football that day at all um you know we had known obviously during the week you know um Dermot had had to leave training one night and uh, obviously what happened and he, we I think we mess um we went to the to church the night before the Friday evening um you know paid our respects that day because we weren't obviously going to be there on Saturday and um it was just it was the whole it was the whole thing though because it was like a he, he was such a huge figure in the GA, you know, in the army, in Kildare, in Roscommon. He was such a, you know, a huge figure around, you know, around the country, really. Um, so there was, like, the amount of people around Newbridge that day, you know, or the night before. I remember the, the funeral was just massive, the Friday evening. And um, just even seeing, like, coming to the dressing room, coming to Conlitz uh, on, the, on the Saturday evening, like, there's Dermot tugging out beside you, you know, putting on his boots. And he's after... Uh, you know, his father after being buried just a couple hours before the game, um, that was just it, it, you know it was it, it was such a strange uh, kind of atmosphere. But again, it was it was I remember I remember that game it was a brilliant game of football. It went extra time, and um, but it was it was a really kind of tense game of football. And you know how he how he talked out and played the way he did. You know that day was was unreal. It finished in a draw, and then you're on the road to Belfast the following weekend for the replay and. Like that game in Newbridge, that drawn game was the first of six weeks in a row that you were playing. It was a pretty incredible qualifier run you went on. Yeah, and that, that probably suited us, you know, just week on week after that. I think we, the away game in Antrim, the replay was, we were a lot more, it was a lot more, you know, we were, I think we were kind of more prepared for that game. Um, and that kind of kicked us off really, you know, and then it was just, it was just a routine then. We, we played a game on Saturday, we had a recovery su- Sunday train on Tuesday, Thursday, back again, match Saturday. And we just got into a, a kind of routine of being sharp. We were fit. We'd worked an awful lot in the six weeks before that answering game. And uh, we'd made a few changes and we just got on our old then, you know, a bit of confidence and a bit of, um, you know, we just kind of week by week, we just kind of seemed to get stronger and stronger as, we, as, as the summer went on. Throughout that series of games that you played in, is the Derry the one that stands out for you personally? You scored one four that day above in Celtic Park. Yeah, that was one. Um, I remember. Yeah, because I, I remember actually going. Uh, we we never. Every time we went to Derry, they beat us and beat us heavily. You know, it wasn't even close in games we played them. Uh, you know, every single match I went went up to Derry, we we were hammered up there, and um, it's it's a long way back from Derry, so you always remember those ones, those games, and uh, we were kind of really focused on that one because we, we kind of were aware of that and like Derry were very good that year as well they, you know the Bradleys did a lot of good players um, but I suppose like that that was just kind of going on from from that meeting I had with here and I just kind of found myself on the end of scores I, I kind of um, I got 1-4 and um, I'd, I'd never do that like before do you know what I mean I would have been a kind of a team player I would have been a, you know I, w- I would have been playing okay in that but like I, I would never have scored 1-4 in a game 
so that was kind of a strange one for me. But um, yeah, no, it was good, obviously, and it was kind of um, it was I think it was, I think it was a televised game as well. And I remember um, I actually remember going into the dressing room after the game, and it was just when I walked into the dressing room, the lads were warming down, and I was on my own, and Kieran was sitting there on his own, just in the silence in, in the dressing room on his own. And he, I just went in and looked at him. He just kind of gave me a little smirk. And it wasn't a word spoken between the two of us. We just sat there. So it was a kind of a, a surreal moment as well up in Derry because he knew how, how big that was for us, um, you know, to win that game up there um, after all the kind of trouble we've had with them before. The season then, when you reflect on it, um, I suppose it ends in pretty dramatic circumstances in that kind of pulsating semi-final against Down. Uh, the late chance which hits the bar like you've scored a goal you've lost out very very narrowly obviously a big disappointment to take does that kind of detract a bit from the from the run you went on and and the series of wins you had in a hole just the the way it all ended yeah the Derry game was was one that was um a big one for us because we'd never really beaten them uh, before and we had you know every time we'd we'd gone up there we'd we'd kind of lost heavily to them um so we were kind of, you know, we were very focused on that one to to try and turn the tide there because they had, you know, they they had some very good players. They were a very strong team, but um, yeah, winning that game was was a big one for us because it was just a tr- it's a very hard place to go to up in Derry to play and um, coming out with you know I, I scored one four, and um, but I, like I would never have done that before in the past. You know, I would have been, you know, one of the kind of lads on the team playing around, but I never would have been the kind of the score really and I suppose that kind of came from the, the um, you know I, I just ended up getting on a lot more ball and I, on, on the end of scores maybe rather than before I wouldn't have worked myself into those positions and uh, things just fell right for me that day I suppose Yeah it finishes on a tough note the year but you go on to play eight more seasons for the Kildare Senior Footballers so I think it's kind of easy to understand why you've pinpointed uh, the meeting you had in the middle of the 2010 summer as one that had a big impact on your Kildare career you know, Kieran had a had a had a great had a great time with us here in, in, in you know in Kildare and we, we had that respect for him. So like any kind of meetings we had with him and every meeting after that I had with him I was uh you know, I was ready to take his advice because it kinda of did change my change the way I looked at it and changed my whole approach. So um yeah, it was it was something definitely I won't forget anyway. Eamon, th- thanks for taking the time to chat to us for the 42's Life Changing Moments podcast series with UPMC, the official healthcare partner of the GPA and GAA.